Your mind has deceived you time and time again. You're not aware of it, but it has happened. And the worst part is that it will happen again. That strange feeling, that fleeting certainty that you've lived this moment before, that you've said these exact words, that you've been in this place with the same light, the same air, the same everything. It's not a mistake of your memory, it's a trap of your perception. And the most unsettling part, you're not the only one who's felt it. Science calls it déjà vu, a French expression that means already seen. But the explanation is not as simple as a mere brain glitch. It's not a technical failure of your mind, but a window to the unknown. Émile Boirac, a French philosopher and psychologist, was the first to give it a name. But neither he nor the scientists who came after have been able to fully explain its true nature. It seems like a mistake of the brain, but what if it's not? What if déjà vu is the proof that time is not linear? What if you're not remembering something but seeing an echo of what is yet to come? What we call the present might be just an illusion, a repetition of what has already been, or what will be. Are you sure you're in control of your own reality? The curious thing is that déjà vu doesn't choose important moments. It doesn't occur in the moments that define the history of your life. It doesn't appear in the great moments, in the achievements, in the falls. It appears in the mundane, in the insignificant, in what is supposedly of no importance, in a casual conversation, at a street corner, in an everyday gesture. Why? Why does our mind stop at the irrelevant? Or is it possible that these moments aren't as irrelevant as we think? Psychologists have tried to explain it with memory theories, as if it were a file error in our brain. As if by accident, something that's happening in the present is stored in memory too early. But something doesn't add up. If it were just a simple mistake, why is it so universal? Why do we all feel it? If it were a problem with the brain, why doesn't it make us question our reality more deeply? Because there's something about déjà vu that feels real. It's not just a failure, it's a visceral certainty. It's as if, for an instant, we access a version of reality we're not supposed to see. Some theories go further. They talk about parallel universes, repeated lives, a mind that not only remembers the past, but also senses the future. Déjà vu could be a crack in the structure of time, a breach in the simulation we live in, a proof that not everything is as it seems. Because, think about it, if your brain can make you believe you've already lived this moment, what else could it be making you believe? What else could it be manipulating without you realizing? And here comes the most unsettling part. Some experiments have shown that déjà vu can be induced. In laboratories, they've managed to trigger this sensation in people, manipulating their perception of memory and time. Which means that, in a way, our reality is more fragile than we think. If they can make you feel like you've lived something before when you haven't, what else could be an illusion? How much of what you remember is real? And how much has been implanted in your mind by an error, manipulation, or a whim of destiny? Every time you experience déjà vu, your mind is sending you a message. But no one knows what it means. Maybe you're trapped in an infinite cycle. Maybe time is not a straight line, but a labyrinth you've never gotten out of. Or maybe, just maybe, there's something trying to wake you up. Because if something repeats, it's because there's a pattern. And if there's a pattern, there's a hidden truth behind it. So the next time you feel déjà vu, stop, observe, listen. Maybe you're seeing an echo of something that hasn't happened yet. Maybe you're trapped in an illusion. Or maybe, just maybe, you're receiving a message from a version of yourself who knows more than you think. But the real question is, are you ready to know the answer? And here is where the most unsettling part comes in. 
Because if déjà vu is an anomaly in our perception of time, what about precognitive dreams? Think about this. Have you ever dreamed of something insignificant, something meaningless, and days or weeks later lived it exactly as you saw it in your mind? Maybe at the time you didn't pay attention to it. Maybe you dismissed it as a coincidence. But now, with everything we've discussed about déjà vu, tell me, do you still think it was just a coincidence? Precognitive dreams have been reported throughout history. Great minds, from philosophers to scientists, have admitted to experiencing moments where something they saw in a dream later manifested in reality. Carl Jung, the father of analytical psychology, spoke about the existence of a collective unconscious, a kind of invisible network where all minds are connected. According to Jung, some people can pick up fragments of this network in their dreams, small pieces of information that haven't happened yet, but are on their way. And here comes the real question. Is déjà vu and precognitive dreaming the same thing? Is it possible that what we call déjà vu is nothing more than the blurred memory of a dream we had and forgot? Maybe the feeling of familiarity comes from there, not from a brain error, but from something much bigger, something our mind can't fully process. Because, let's be honest, science has tried to explain many things, but there's something it can't deny. The human brain is still a mystery. We don't fully understand how memory works, how it stores memories, how sometimes it can recreate details we've never seen before. We don't understand why there are people who claim to have predicted tragedies or important events in their dreams with impossible accuracy. Some will say it's chance that it's our brain playing with probabilities. But if that's the case, why are there dreams that come true with chilling precision? Not vaguely, not ambiguously, but word for word, image for image, exactly as we remembered them. Now imagine that déjà vu and precognitive dreams are part of the same thing. Imagine that both are small glimpses of a truth we can't clearly see. A hint that time isn't as we perceive it. That it's not a straight line, but something malleable, something that at certain moments allows us to glimpse the future before it happens. But here comes the most terrifying part. What if déjà vu is not just a glimpse of what's coming, but a message? What if what we interpret as a simple flaw in our perception is, in fact, a warning? Maybe when we feel déjà vu, it's not just an echo of the past or the future. Maybe it's our mind trying to tell us something. Something we need to understand before it's too late. Because here is the final paradox. The more we try to understand déjà vu, the more it slips away from us. The closer we get to deciphering it, the more we realize that maybe we're not meant to fully understand it. But if that's the case, why do we experience it? Why does our mind give us these little flashes? Maybe because, in some way, we have more control over our reality than we think. Maybe because, although we don't know it, Every decision we make not only changes our future, but resonates in versions of ourselves that haven't yet reached that point in time. Or worse still, maybe déjà vu is the proof that we are not completely free. That we're trapped in a cycle, reliving the same events over and over again, without realizing it. And if that's true, the real question is not what déjà vu is, but how to escape it. But if we're trapped in a cycle, if our lives are a series of repetitions disguised as free will, how would we notice? How would you realize that you're living the same story over and over again with no possibility of change? This is where things get unsettling. Because some people claim to have lived not only déjà vus, but moments of awareness within the déjà vu. Experiences where they not only feel they've lived that instant before, but for a moment, they know what's going to happen next. 
as if they were reading a script they already know, as if time slid down a predefined path they can't alter. There have been documented cases of people who, in the middle of deja vu, predict what someone is going to say or what will happen in the next fraction of a second. And they're right. It's not a vague feeling. It's not just any intuition. It's a fleeting, absolute certainty. And then it disappears. Most don't talk about this. They prefer to convince themselves it was a coincidence, that their brain was just playing tricks on them. Because the alternative is terrifying. The alternative is accepting that maybe the future is already written, that we don't have the control we think we have. But here's something even stranger. There are those who claim to have broken the pattern. People who, at the exact moment they feel deja vu, do something radically different. Something they would never do in a normal situation. They speak when they should remain silent. They turn when they should keep walking. They divert from their path. And in that instant, they say they felt something indescribable, as if they had broken an invisible barrier, as if they had escaped, for a moment, from a destiny that was already decided. And that raises an even more disturbing idea. What if déjà vu is a crossroads? A point of bifurcation in time, where we're given the chance to stray from the planned path. But almost no one does it. Almost no one challenges the feeling. Almost everyone ignores it and moves on, trapped in the flow of events that have already happened before. Maybe déjà vu isn't a sign that we're trapped in a cycle, but an opportunity to get out of it. And if that's true, the next question is inevitable. Who set the cycle in the first place? Because here is where déjà vu becomes something much bigger. It's not just a brain glitch. It's not just a memory error or a trick of our perception. It's a code in the system. A crack in the structure of reality that allows us to glimpse, for a second, that there's something beyond what we can see. What would happen if déjà vu wasn't a flaw, but a message? A reminder that this reality isn't as solid as we believe. That there are other versions of ourselves moving in different timelines, on paths we never took but somehow still exist. Some ancient cultures believed that time isn't a straight line, but a circle. That everything we live has already happened before, and we'll live it again. But, if that's true, if we're doomed to repeat the same events over and over again, déjà vu is the crack in that circle, the only clue that there's a way out. But escape to what, exactly? That's the real question. If every déjà vu is a crack in reality, a moment when the simulation breaks, then what's behind that crack? If you ever feel déjà vu, if you ever feel that sensation of having been in that moment before, try doing something unexpected. Try challenging the script. Because if you're right, if you really have lived that instant before, the only thing that can break the cycle is change. And who knows? Maybe, just maybe, déjà vu isn't a mistake, but a test. And maybe only a few will be able to see it for what it truly is. But if déjà vu is a test, if it really is an opportunity to change something, then the most important question arises. What happens if we ignore it? Because, let's face it, most people feel déjà vu and let it pass. They shrug it off, think how strange, and continue with their day. But what if that's exactly what we shouldn't do? What if every déjà vu we ignore is an opportunity we let slip by? Maybe the reason we feel déjà vu in seemingly insignificant moments is because that's where change truly happens. Not in the big events, not in monumental decisions, but in the small things. In a turn, in a word we didn't say, in a minimal action that could have taken our life in another direction. Maybe life isn't defined by big moments, but by the details. And if that's true, it means déjà vu isn't just a simple error of our mind. It's a marker on the path. A sign that we're at the exact point where something can change, or where something has already changed. But if that's the case, 
If déjà vu is a crack in the structure of our reality, then there's something we must ask ourselves. How many times have we ignored the exit? Think about it. Maybe déjà vu isn't just a reflection of the past, but the proof that the future isn't as immutable as we think. Maybe every time we feel déjà vu, it's because there's a version of ourselves somewhere in another time, in another possibility, that has made a different decision. And if that's true, then the conclusion is inevitable. Life isn't a story written in stone. There are alternative paths, hidden routes, ways to break the cycle. But only if we know how to recognize them. So the next time you feel déjà vu, don't ignore it. Don't dismiss it as just a brain glitch. Stop, observe, ask yourself, why this moment? Why now? Maybe, just maybe, it's an opportunity you'll never get again. And here comes the final question. If déjà vu is a sign that destiny isn't fixed, then what are you waiting for to change yours? Leave me your answer in the comments. I want to know what you think about this. And if you've ever felt a déjà vu so strong that it made you doubt reality, tell me about it too. Subscribe if you want more content like this. And if you've made it this far, comment. The cycle won't trap me. See you in the next video. Or maybe we've been here before.